You're listening to Parasearch Radio. News, views and reviews from the world of the paranormal from across the UK and beyond. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web. The views and opinions expressed by presenters and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Parasearch Radio or their affiliates and sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this brilliant edition of the Paranormal Concept Show. Well, I'm your host, Paul Rook, and tonight I'm joined, as always, by the lovely Kerry Greenaway. Hello, Kerry. Hello, love. All right. Yeah, not too bad. How are you? Exhausted. I have been so busy. It's untrue. <laughs> Obviously not reading research, maybe. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> what, what have you been up to then well quite a bit really i've been evaluating some stock um that uh-huh. hopefully up and coming soon um it's pretty goddamn amazing even if i do say so myself and i have been um looking at what have i been looking at i can't actually i worked all week i worked quite i've been doing a lot of hours lately and it's just really mucking up my paranormal time it's getting on my nerves you're you're gonna have to quit your day job really i I think i think that's gonna have to be what happens at some point i've got time to do everything work on it we're working on it anyway i haven't even finished my article yet article what for the blogs or like for spooky hours, I'm writing an article for spooky hours at the moment. <laughs> Poor man's uh, been eating traitor. months. <laughs> no, I was for spooky hours for like, blogging for you, and I need, and I I I am due a blog myself for Parasite, so I really need to buckle down and be sensible absolutely. with myself, be controlled with myself. Yeah, absolutely. But I, at the weekend, I went off to the Haunted Antiques Paranormal Research Centre. I know you did. You sneaked off. You just went, right, see you later. I did. I thought, you know what? I want to go up and see Neil and have a look at the artifacts again that um, some of my team took up there because I I didn't know what was taken up there. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to go and have a look. Mm -hmm. So I had a bit of a nosy round and, um, yeah, I, I joined them on Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon for their tea and chat. Yeah, met a few other paranormal investigators. Yeah, it was really interesting. And then I went on to their um, seance on the Sunday. That that was quite an interesting experience. Yeah. But de- definitely going to be going again. Might, might make it a regular occurrence and go once a month or something. Well, you certainly need to. And you met last night's guest up there as well, didn't you, Lucy? Lucia Albrighton, yeah. she was up there with yeah. you, and um, we interviewed her, oh, I say I, because poor you Jolene got stuck at the hospital, didn't she? So, uh, she did. Um, I um, took the helm and interviewed Lucy um, on last night's show, so yeah. Yeah, absolutely, she was quite nervous about last night, but I was like, nah, just be a chat, don't worry about it, you'll be fine. She was, <laughs> she was bless her, she was incredibly nervous, but um, she did a really good job. I liked she her, did, Lucy. absolutely. Amazing. Anyway, now, now we've got now we've got the chat room going, and and it's a bit like the Waltons in there at the moment. They're going, hi, John boy. <laughs> um, I just want to give let, a shout about... Hi, Daryl. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never mind Richard in there. <laughs> oh, sorry, hi, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, tonight's um, tonight's topic: catacombs. Yeah. We, we come up with this topic. In one of our chats on sun, Saturday afternoon, didn't we? We did. I like this topic because I think everyone, when you say catacombs, everyone goes Paris, and yeah. everybody thinks right. of like skull encrusted, you know, walls, and also a lot to do with the film that was released, um, the horror yeah. film. Absolutely, and in my research, I mean, I, I did obviously look at other catacombs. But you can't do catacombs without mentioning the Paris one. So we just mentioned it now, so that's it. That's done. We'll move on to the next one. <laughs> yeah, only because we, it's like, for us like in the UK, I think Paris catacombs is like the most well-known one and the most iconic from, you know, those kind of uh, films. And like a lot of 
because it is so creepy down there. But it isn't like what you think it is in Paris. It's because they have a cinema in there or a theatre in there. They have a restaurant down there. It's massive. They do. It is. It's a massive location. And um, apparently it took 12 years to complete. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was back in 1780. Uh, actually, no, no, it's 17. They're, they're basically, what it was, they, they found, I think they found the catacombs in 1780 because there was some heavy rains and it wrecked the burial mound. Mm. And um, it just sent, obviously, decaying bodies all over the place. Um, and then that's sort of where they, it, they, they sort of found it, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, catacombs in general are basically giant burial grounds, mass burial grounds. And there's always a problem in cities um, of overpopulation, people dying, not having enough graveyards to bury them in. So a lot of places, and there are a lot of places, bury underground. And it's actually the Jews bury underground. And that's where it sort of originates from. It originates right back from that, as above, so below. Uh, Apparently as well. I, I found out that there's apparently six million bodies down there. Nice. Yeah. And and it's supposed to be the biggest one ever mm. discovered. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But anyway, that that's about the French one. We, we right. said we wasn't going to be talking about the Paris No, one. well, we've covered it enough. So so um, let's yeah. get on to some different ones that people may not have heard of or, or may have heard of and don't know a lot about. One thing, though, I wanted to discuss with you quickly, because we're going to be yeah. just looking at, like, the concept of categories, you know, burial places lots of dead people blah 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 right do you think they're haunted or they could be haunted do you think these catacombs are just scary places so they set your psychological triggers off all over the place or do you think there's a truth in that they could be haunted i am i think because some of some of the history of some of the catacombs they were mines before they were catacombs Mm mm-hmm so there's a possibility that you've got people dying down there. Um, you know, you, you, you've got the possibility of it being haunted. The fact that there are some, like the Paris catacombs, with the skulls and the bones and stuff lining the caves, because the, the Paris ones apparently were um, mines as well. Yeah, they were limestone. So, yeah, um so again, you know, you've got that possibility that it is haunted, but as you said, it also can trigger, you know, the fear factor because they do look so spooky and they've got skulls there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if someone's laid there to rest, I don't really see why they would be haunting that place. Like, for example, a, a normal cemetery. Mm. Uh, people are laid in a cemetery to rest in peace. So, I mean, my attitude is just to basically let them, leave them alone. I, I don't like investigating cemeteries for that reason. You know, people are laid there to rest. It's about respect. Leave them, leave them be, basically. Mm. Uh, but, you know, that that's just what I do. Um, you know, I, I've got no problems with other paranormal teams going out and doing investigations at cemeteries here, there and everywhere. Um, as long as they're respectful, I don't see a problem with it, but it's just not for me. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I've done plenty of graveyards in my time, um, mm. out investigating in the middle of the night. And like you say, as long as you're respectful, um, then I don't see any difference between that or going to a home or I, I can't see church. Why. People are buried in churches, aren't they? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I can't see why a, a spirit would want to haunt a graveyard I mean you know when it's my turn and I'm dead and buried I'm not going to hang around my body I'm going to be terrorised in certain TV ghost hunting shows <laughs> enjoy myself I'm, I'm not going to go nowhere near graveyards no it's boring <laughs> unless that's where the paranormal teams were hanging out of course <laughs> oh. Well, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it just creates so much mental imagery, that one. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, the exorcist will have nothing on me, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Paul. You know you'll just be lying there and telling other ghosts how to do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Teach them all how to do it. <laughs> 
<laughs> it'd be it'd be like the old winter ghost. That was it. <laughs> oh gosh, yes, do you remember that program? Anyway, we've got off topic. Um, one of the one of the most interesting, I think, I found was the Roman um, catacombs. So there are hundreds of them. There's loads of them, and they reckon there's still some that aren't even discovered in Rome or in yep. Italy because you can't ex- excavate say that word right Exc- you can't go looking for them because it's under they're under Vatican they're under papal law so if you thought you found something you would have to go to the Vatican and the Vatican denies you it's a bit like trying to get into the Vatican vaults you know what I mean yeah. you just like it's impossible to do for like anybody and even if you've got the credentials it's impossible to do <coughs> excuse me I mean it's, it's the same same thing as my you know my opinion <laughs> where you know this is where people are laid to rest let them rest yeah so maybe that's why they refuse I, I can understand why they do definitely yeah yeah right. so where else have you seen so in Rome. In Rome. We're in Rome. We're so we're Rome. doing as the Romans, right? Yep. We're doing as the Romans do. Now, there's a very famous uh, road, um, Roman road, that's still there. Okay. Okay. And it's called Via Appia Antica, or the Old Roman Appian Way. Now, this was a really important road. Now, the, the road itself isn't the important bit, right? The important bit is some of the catacombs that they found alongside this road. Now, um, there is a really famous... Oh, there's loads in Rome, trust me. We'll be talking about a few of them because they're so fascinating. And also, these ones, some of them them don't have visible bones, I would like to say. Some of them just look like tombs, right? But they're decorated with some fantastic artwork, some of the best artwork. And, of course, because it's in a catacomb, it's kind of well-preserved down there. Yeah. So, Absolutely. I, I did see, I mean, there, there was one, I think, um, it had um, a stone altar, and I think on top of it was the the body of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And although he wasn't buried at that particular catacomb, they still honoured his body there. Oh, totally. And if you go to, um, oh, what's the name of it now? Um Oh, it's either San Sebastian or the other one, San Callisto. You know a bit, a little bit about San Callisto. Um, in I think it's San Callisto. They reckon that there's Jesus's footprints in the marble, and they've got a yeah. relic there. And that's a topic I thought we could mark down for another show because I, when I started to think about that one, my mind sort of kind of was, went off in total tangents on that one. Relics is actually got when a I, relic. When I think- when I, when I think of relics, it just reminds me of a um, an episode of Black Adder, <laughs> where he's selling Reddit re, uh, relics, and he he had like Jesus's fingers, and like they only come in black. But yeah, we could talk about that um, yeah. because it, at this place um, is it, the San Sebastian. He was allegedly killed by an arrow. And the arrow is the relic that is in this um, church that's above the San Sebastian catacombs. So yeah. these catacombs are scattered down this road and they're really important places and they're absolutely huge. And the reason they're outside of Rome is because they were Christians. They were Christian catacombs. And Christians yeah, couldn't be buried in they, Rome. They, yeah, they, they sort of were against Christianity, weren't they, really, I think. Mm. Yeah, it's a little bit... Yeah, and um, <laughs> yeah, maybe just a little bit, you know. <laughs> and, and that's why that's why there's a lot of Christian symbols. Like that's how the the, the birth of the you know the Christian fish mm-hmm. that that you see it represents yeah. Christians. Um, it was almost like a secret symbol mm-hmm. that people would carve on doorways and stuff just to let others know that they're Christian. That's right. Without the yeah. Roman knowing. Yeah, see, it? I, I, I'm not. I'm, done the Christian basics. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Well done, Paul. Ten team points, gold star, and a little merry badge right there. That's it. I'm in lead already this week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 
Um, so in Rome, there are some catacombs that date right back to the first century, and they they think they're the first that were ever built. Yep, absolutely. Um, yeah. So I, I did <laughs> I, I did see that some of them. Um, it, it's it's almost like. Uh, you know, when you go into like a cemetery and you've got like the different built, like mausoleum building type things mm. dotted around, you know, it's almost like that in some of the catacombs where you go into it and then there's like different rooms for different families or communities and mm-hmm. things like that. I thought that was quite an interesting um, thing. No, that's exactly kind of what it was like though, isn't it? So there'll be communal ones for just about everybody, but then. They, they did. It did take on quite a um, honour to be put into the catacombs. You'll find a lot of saints are in catacombs. You've got to think about. I mean, even in uh, the Vatican itself, you've got the tombs of Saint Peter, haven't you? You know, um, built on the mound of Saint Peter. It that's where the Vatican comes from. His remains are down there in the catacombs of Rome, underneath the Vatican. So you've got very special. Saint, you know, San Sebastian is actually um, he's been martyred, so he's down there. You know, you've got some quite high personages um, that are buried in these catacombs, and you can visit some of them, not all of them, but apparently there's 600 kilometres of networks of catacombs beneath Rome. I, I think, again, with, with Rome as well, um, in, in ancient Rome, it, it wasn't permitted for bodies to be buried within the city walls. So... Um, while the pagans cremated their dead, Christians obviously were um, not allowed legally to practice their religion. Mm. So they used to go to these catacombs. Um, so not only were they used for burying their dead, but it was also um, so that they could have their religious ceremonies as well. Mm. So, it, it, I mean, the catacombs did sort of double up as not only just a church, but obviously somewhere that buried the dead. But at the time, it would have been such a um, thing. There would have been lots of treasures and stuff like that in them. I mean, um, in the early 9th century, a lot of those catacombs were like uh, pillaged. I love that word, pillaged um, by Germanic invaders. So a lot of relics of the saints and stuff like that kind of went missing um, and they kind of ended up abandoning them. But they, a lot of them are rediscovered in the 1600s. See, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure on what sort of treasures and relics they were gonna, they, they would have, because going back to the ninth century, they they're not gonna have like the, you know, gold dripping from the walls or anything like that, are they? Well, the Egyptians they're, did. Yeah, but they they just pillaged <laughs> it. We don't but maybe know. that's what if, you know. I, maybe maybe I, I, I don't. The bones. Maybe it was just a case of like Jesus's fingers in sold in packs of ten. I don't, I don't know. You never know, or maybe a real Roman skull for five hundred whatever pounds. Well, possibly, I suppose. Yeah. Maybe there was a roaring trade in skulls or something back in the day. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> I would imagine that they used to adorn them with um beautiful works of art, like I said, and stuff like that. So and statues. So it maybe it was stuff like that that was being pillaged. Um, because you've got to remember the Romans a bit of a dab hand at the old painting and carving, yeah. didn't they? I mean they, they do um the catacombs in Rome, they they do allow now um tourists to go and have a look at. Mm. And, and just have a wander around and stuff, um, because there's like 600 kilometres of network of these catacombs spread over five stories. Mm. So it's not just the one level either. No, it goes down, doesn't it? You've got five stories yeah. below. There's a lot of digging out, isn't it? It is, isn't it? I mean, but yes, yeah, you just imagine the smell. No, not now, but back in the day, I bet. Mind you, well, you've got to remember the living conditions in the city probably didn't smell so good, so maybe it smelled a bit sweeter down there. Rotting flesh. Yeah, each there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Things we think of. But I have to say, I was surprised that, um, I mean, 
I hate to go back to Paris, but there's, the catacomb thing has a whole history. I mean, like now you can go, you visit as a tourist, blah, blah, blah. But back then, it wasn't just a place, that, it was a place of burying the dead, but many people took refuge there in the world wars. And that was quite prevalent with the Paris catacombs. What surprised me about this one, right? Now, we, we mentioned earlier 300, I'm going back to Paris, sorry, because I, I found this bit a bit fascinating and we didn't mention it. 300 kilometres of catacombs, right? But in those catacombs, you had the Germans who took, ha- you know, housed some part of it. And then the French resistance would be in another part of it. <laughs> and I thought, God, how funny is that? It, it is, isn't it? I mean, across the like German going, oh, what the hell are you doing down here? This is ours. <laughs> absolutely. But you've got such a vast cave system mm-hmm. that... You 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 know you you might only just know about a little section of it. So if it was occupied, I mean, I can understand how that that would have happened. But it only take one to go and wander off, get lost, and end up like French resistance in the German camp. Funny, I do I find mean, it, it a little it, funny. Yeah, it is quite amusing. That actually. it's just a whole comedy in my head around that scenario. Yeah. I, I can I can well imagine that to be fair. <laughs> now let's go across the world. Let's go to the monastery of San San Francisco catacombs. Now, when I read that title, my head straight away went obviously to San Francisco, but it's not. Yep. It's in Peru. Peru. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And apparently, this uh, yeah, it's in Lima, isn't it? Mm-hmm. This one and. They reckon that there's roughly about 25,000 to 75,000 bodies here. Nice. Yeah. I would have hated to have counted them. Maybe they sort of just did like a average. Well, maybe. Who knows? They yeah. took sort of like I don't know, a maths thing, a maths equation to come up with that figure. Because that's quite a big difference, actually, 25 to 75. There's like a 50 grand difference. Yeah, so I, 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 yeah, I, I would maybe would have thought of that actually. It does sound like a general thing, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Really. But again, this this is another one that was created for overcrowding as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Mhm. Yeah, definitely. And uh, but like I said earlier, this is such a common problem in cities, and then a, a bulging population. Where do you bury them? I mean, thank God we ended up burning people when they died because could you imagine if all we had now was burial we'd just yeah. be walking i mean we pretty much they said they reckon don't they that we're ev- that we're walking on bones everywhere yeah I'd not on canvas though because we're on mud <laughs> canvas just a sinkhole waiting to happen <laughs> yeah it's definitely that but yeah, it's, it's um, a beautiful sinkhole, is all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, this, the, the uh, Monastery of San Francisco mm. uh, catacombs, um, yeah, it was it was built under an 18th century colonial monastery, um, and it's the city's first and large, largest. Uh, most of Lima's dead are found um, there for, uh, they've been down there for centuries even, um, and and yeah, I think even to the early nineteenth century as well, wasn't it? I think. Mm. Yeah, it was. Um, where so, apparently someone had the genius idea to build a graveyard outside of the town, as well. Mm-hmm. So, so they, yeah, so they it, kind of dissolved the corpses in quick climb. Yeah. Right. So they got rid of all the fleshy bits, and then when it was just the skeleton, skeleton, skeleton. It's my little, another one of my curiosities, my little skeletons. Um, they would, you know, take them and put them in the ossuary. However you say that word, ossuary? Yeah, that'll that, that, that do. That'll do. Um, and there's lots of little passageways down there that was used, they reckon, during the um, Inquisition over there. Yeah, that that's, uh, yeah, that'd be another interesting subject at some point. But they reckon that um, their most famous resident, is Juan Gomez, a 16th century doctor and friar who, according to legend, possessed miraculous faith-healing powers. 
cool. I know him well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> You know, I, I can imagine it. April Fool's Day, it'd be like a case of walking up someone with it in a wheelchair and go, "You are healed. You can walk." And they get yeah. up, fall down, flat on their face. April Fools. <laughs> That's cruel. <laughs> I, well, maybe it was like that. I don't know. Oh, just, who just knows? putting that. He, he might have been that cruel. He might have been, but. 16th century doctor, you never know, do you? They were a bit cruel to each other back then. Or maybe he did possess miraculous faith healing powers. Who knows? They, they, love, that, but... they love all that over there, don't they? They do. Absolutely. There's a whole, there's a whole uh, even to this day, um, yeah. they'll turn to faith healing rather than Western medicine. Yeah, I, I'm not too keen on the whole faith healing thing for various reasons. But, um, yeah, so that, that's the San Francisco catacombs. So where do you fancy going now, then? I fancy going back to Italy. I fancy going to Palermo. Is that how you say that, Palermo? Funny, because it's the next one listed in the research. It's the next one listed in the research. <laughs> We're going easy. But this one's really gruesome. This one's really horrible. Go for it. Right. The Capuchin Monks, um, this is their little catacomb, shall we say. Um, and it's actually buried on the outskirts of Palermo. There's a theme here. It's always on the outskirts of something, right? Now, yeah. deceased members of their order have been quasi-mummified, so partially mummified. And then they've propped them up in gruesome poses since 1599. That's, that's quite funny, actually. Right. Now, I was thinking, well, what are these gruesome poses? Because I was thinking my brain went off. You can imagine, can't you? It went off. Now, um, <laughs> what ended up happening was like the the upper class of the day kind of liked the idea of this because they're put into like positions like hanging on walls, sitting around tables. Some are in glass coffins. Yep. You know, like it's set out. Like, it's I kind of... In my head, I've got you walking into, like, a dining room area. Do you know what I mean? Sort of thing. With people sat, like, skelling, uh, partially mummified people, like, sitting around. It would be really weird. Yeah, that would, wouldn't it? But it would be quite entertaining to it. Like, well, not entertaining, but it would be quite interesting to see. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and... Now, the fa- most famous resident at this one is... Um, a little girl called Rosalia Lombardo. Now, she died at the age of two um, back in the 1920s, and she's nicknamed Sleeping Beauty because she's actually in a coffin, glass coffin. Oh. Maybe that's what sparked off the, the story. But they say that she's she's actually quite well preserved. Oh, OK. Which is quite interesting. Yeah. Yeah, you would have would have thought the air would have got to them and decomposed her well i don't know i mean they say they're quasi mummified if they're quasi mummified maybe they just did a better job of her so she yeah. didn't decompose maybe that was sort of part of the agreement that you know she wouldn't rot well yeah okay Who if knows, you want to believe eh? that I know. Exactly. I'm just trying to think That's nice. It. It's a two-year-old kid by the at the end of the day, isn't it? Yeah. That's it. Um, and in in the course of the research, um, I found St. Michin's Church mm. um, catacombs mm. in Dublin and Ireland. And this has to be one of the smallest ones that I found because there's only a few dozen bodies in it. Mm-hmm. Which, I, you know, I, I thought... I, I, I would have thought maybe they'd just stick to uh, cemetery with that one. I mean, you know, a few few dozen bodies. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, sun, central Dublin isn't the first place you'd uh, think of for going for mummies. But um, an ancient... Um, oh, I don't know, what, what does it say? But an a- ancient of nature has created some northernless... No, that just makes no sense. No, uh, yeah, not, I need my glasses on, I think, to read this. <laughs> Told you, it's <laughs> tiny writing, everybody. Tiny writing. <laughs> like, we're struggling here with the writing size. Okay, you, you carry on then. 
<laughs> oh, I see. Pass the buck. Oh. Now, the nature of this particular crypt, and I think this would probably more, be more a crypt than it would be a catacomb, in all honesty, but it's interesting to mention it because um, because of it, it's dry, cool air and limestone walls has actually mummified a lot of the bodies down there. Okay, so some of the coffins have fallen away and you've got these perfectly mummified bodies in there. And uh, they've got various nicknames. There's the Thief, the Nun, the Unknown and the Crusader. Now, on the Crusader, you can visit, you know, you can visit this place as a tourist and for the added pleasure, you can touch the Crusader's fingers. Oh, is all I'm saying. Yeah, but, you know, I, I thought, you know, this place, their, their claim to fame is that Bram Stoker actually paid a visit there. Mm, Dracula. And, and they, Dracula. He, what? He, oh, oh. Yeah, that's it. And, um, yeah, so I think maybe that, that sort of gave him some, again, inspiration mm. for the story. He drew his and inspiration from everywhere, didn't he, though? He did. Absolutely. I mean, I think, wasn't it him as well that got some inspiration from Mary Shelley? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and as he sailed I'll, into Whitby Whit- Bay, he got his yeah. inspiration there as well. And when we had Dak Clay Stoker on, um, he was talking about um, everywhere. He would pick inspiration from everywhere, even down to some road names and stuff he used as character names um, in the book. So, in, and he had a mummy fire link here for you. In his study, he had a mummy. Wow. Did you know that? No, no, I didn't know that, but I do now. I know, right? Back so in was... St. Michan's Church, there um, is also, this is also where Handel, the famous composer, composed the Messiah on the organ upstairs. Awesome. Did you know that? I did. I don't even know how the song goes, but <laughs> yeah. I probably heard it. I probably oh, heard it at some point. Yeah. But... Oh, yeah. Definitely. I'm not going to even try to sing it to you, but because I can't remember it myself, quite frankly. But you know it. To be you heard it. You're singing, so. Yeah, <laughs> like you, I'm an awesome singer. <laughs> we'll spare the listeners. <laughs> 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 yes, I'm clearing my throat to give you all a little song. I don't think so. <laughs> Where's the <one>? Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. So who's its famous resident after all those little tidbits of knowledge for them? Yeah, that, um, it was a guy called William Rowan Hamilton. Uh, he was born 1805 to 1865, and he's an English Irish uh, Anglo Irish mathematician um, who spruced up Newton's laws. Oh, he sounds like a fun guy. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you know, Sir Isaac Newton come up with the his laws of physics, and this guy come along and cleaned it up a bit and made it more understandable. Possibly, I don't know. I don't know. Just... Maybe he made it. Makes sense. Like you say, well, maybe it was a bit highbrow for some people to understand. It's like it spruced it up, so maybe Isaac Newton wrote it on a tablet or something and he just dusted it down or something. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> uh, we might be doing Mr. William Rowan Hamilton a great injustice there, I <laughs> feel. <laughs> oh, dear. So where are we going next? Uh, uh, I don't know. What's the next one? I can't see it. Vienna. We'll go to Vienna then. Stephen That's where we're Stom going. Crypt. Again, this is a crypt, not a catacomb. Okay. But it's still, it's, it's still pretty much the same thing, isn't it, really? It's still basically an underground chamber, chambers or tunnels that are used to inter the dead. Inter the dead. And, yeah, but then this is a, although for, it's a crypt, it's got 11,000 people in it. This is true. It's a lot of people down in one little crypt, right? Yeah, definitely. And, um, yeah, let's, let's just scroll down my research. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. We're sounding so professional tonight, Paul. It's on through. <laughs> We're rocking this game, aren't we, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Basically, well, what do you royals. Do this? this is to do oh, with the royals. 
Yes, absolutely. The Australia, uh, Austrian ones. That's right. Not the Australian, the Austrian ones. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to start a GoFundMe for new glasses for the pair of us. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, that sounds good to me. <laughs> or, maybe let, or maybe we need to learn how to use our fonts better. <laughs> That's binoculars, I think. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dearie me, it's funny. Absolutely funny. Right, anyway, so if you was a member of the royal family, your body was laid to rest in the imperial crypt. But your heart wound up in an urn at the Augustinian church and your visceras were sealed in jars beneath Stevensdom, Stevensdom, central Vienna's towering Gothic cathedral. Lovely. Awesome. Actually, you saying about that, um, another bit of information. Where I, where I, used to, where I grew up, um, there was a old abbey called Lesnes Abbey. Mm. And when they done an archaeological dig there, they actually found a... In, I think it was in the chapel section. In the ground, they found a box, and inside the box was someone's heart. Oh. And it, it was attributed to the... I think it was the daughter's heart that... The, the, the bloke who owned the... Or was given the Lesnes Abbey. Um, I think it was his daughter's heart. But uh, that's sort of another show anyway. Oh, I've been accused of putting people's hearts in boxes before now. Don't talk to me about that one. That's a very <laughs> messy time of my life. <laughs> but I know, it was just that, that sort of sparked off that memory and I thought, yeah, why not? Yeah, well, you know, but heart in a box, I, I, everybody. I, when I went to the Haunted Antiques Research Centre, I did actually buy a book on um, stories from different places all over the can, uh, country and Lesnes Abbey is in it and it does tell the story that's Ooh. again it sort of refreshed my memory so yeah we'll, we'll definitely go through that book anyway and we'll do a show on it or something yeah I'm sure we will at some point I'll have to read it though you know that yeah that's all I'll just take a photo of it because it's only a little bit does that mean <laughs> I, does that mean like I get another book added to my collection no, no, this is this is going to stay firmly with me. Because <laughs> it's, it's, it's full of loads of other places that I can do location events at. <laughs> oh, I see. Hmm. Anyway, back to Vienna. Now, there are more than 70 of these kind of repositories in the crypt of Stevenson's, Stephen Stevenson's, why do they make names so complicated over in Austria, um, in the catacombs? They, so this isn't a crypt, this one is a catacomb. And yep. there's lots of bones down there, lots and lots of bones. And and yes, they, they do um, offer guided tours mm-hmm. to the, um, where the walls where all the gut-filled jars are. Lovely. So that's somewhere else for a dark tourist. I would say so. And yeah, then popping that's... over to Ireland to touch the finger of the whatever his name was, Crusader. Yeah, that that would be interesting. It's a pure dark there's tourism no... sites, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. But there, there's no interesting people buried there, though. No. Uh, the, uh, this one. No, I just think they just let anybody in that one. Yeah, that's it. Um, but now we, we could quite easily go off to Alexandra in Egypt now. Egypt is I like, I suppose, one of the best known ones for its tombs and stuff, isn't it? I mean, that period of history is kind of well documented. Yeah. So off you go. Because there's words in there that I can't say. <laughs> so All right, you okay. Have so I'm going for this one, am I right? I'm going to have to. I'm yeah. going to just read this one because this is a bit complicated. Everybody, Egyptian stuff always is. Right. So this it is subterranean as well as above ground. Okay, and the name of it, which is called Com El Shakafa. That that do me. That do you? Okay. Yeah. Means Mound of Shards. Now, it was basically forgotten about and then the name was changed to protect the innocent. 
<laughs> it was discovered again when a donkey actually fell into a hole while cut, cut, like carting their rocks through Alexandria. They like moving rocks over there, don't they, a lot? They, they it's do. It's so hot. I mean, come on, there's better pastimes. Um, now, it actually dates from the second century, and actually the design of the catacombs reflects the cultural diversity of the city above it. Um, traditional Egyptian sarcophagi rub elbows with Greek and Roman style statuaries. So it's quite a diverse um, catacomb that you go into. Now, Kom El Shukafa was most likely built for one family, but then expanded to include um, more deceased guests. But inside, there's a banqueting hall, um, so they can have parties. That's nice of them, isn't it? I gave them a banqueting hall. Absolutely, yeah. So, yeah, they can go celebrate the dead's birthday and things like that. That'd be mm. awesome. It is awesome. Yeah. I wonder what the higher fee is. <laughs> 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 oh dear god dear. oh no 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 <laughs> you, so you wouldn't you wouldn't do an event down there then no yeah i'd do an event but i wouldn't stay down there okay don't want to sleep with dead bodies but you're breathing in you know it's i always go yeah. for the practical as my reasons why not to do something i don't just go oh no 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 yeah. i just don't want to it's I would be breathing in dead bodies dust. So that's like, no. <laughs> be a little cold okay. down there. I don't do cold. <laughs> you know. I'd like to come visit it. Might, it and go, them. ooh, ooh, click photo, photo. You know what I mean? Learn about it. But to actually stay down there and to investigate it, no, nah, not really. All right, so, so let's get this right, okay? You'd not go down there to have a... A, a party or whatever, no. but you are happily going down there to take pictures, <laughs> do the touristy thing, yeah. But you're still being the, the point is though that you're still down there and you're still breathing in this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever way you're doing it, you wear a mask. <laughs> oh my life. Oh dear. Let, let's drag you away from Egypt and let's go back to the Rome Italy one. Well, oh, oh, I'll dodge that. Okay, you can go back to Italy if you want to. Uh, well, I think it was the. This is the other one that you was meant you was talking about. What the San Calix ducks? Yeah, that that's one. the one. Yeah, uh, yeah, because it, it says it's got the footprints to Jesus on display. Mm. Sebastian. Exactly. I mean, gosh, they're supposed to. The, the legend is when Jesus um, walked the road, uh, the Roman road that I talked to you about earlier. Yeah. Yep. He then went into this church and he left his footprints in the marble. He must have very heavy feet, everybody. He might have been a really heavy person. <laughs> <laughs> the weight of the world on his shoulders. <laughs> well, he certainly would have definitely have had the weight of the world on his shoulders, is all I can say. That now, it, is, it actually is quite astonishing um, Saint Calixtus. It is the former resting place of ten martyrs, not just one, but ten of them, and sixteen popes are in there as well. I suppose ten martyrs would be better than two, wouldn't it? What? Two martyrs? No. Okay, don't worry about it. Oh no! <laughs> don't you start with the dad jokes, God. <laughs> 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 oh my lordy I can't get away from dad jokes everybody help <laughs> and every time I go huh what <laughs> what are you going on about every single time they get me on these ones I tell you um, that's actually quite though if you think about that that's 10 martyrs and 16 popes and you know, Roman Catholics are very devout people, aren't they? They're incredibly devout, particularly in Rome. So that must be a very, very sacred place for the... Um, and I reckon 
is probably the uh, pilgrimage route. Isn't there seven churches of pilgrimage in Rome, if I remember right? I, I think it's all over the place, though, aren't I? I think on all the roads leading that way. Yeah, there are still seven pilgrim churches of Rome, and this is one of them. Okay. And that's because of awesome. the... the um, the, what's the word? The sacredness of the people that are buried there. Popes, they're amazing people. Mm. When you think about yeah. it. Cool. You yeah. have to be a very strong person, actually, to be a Pope. Why? Well, you've got all those monks, not monks, but like the the, you've got all the other... Priests. Yeah, and cardinals and all them sorts. And I bet the intrigue, I mean, they, they all act like, you know, saintly figures who believe in God and it's all wonderful and, you know, um, that side of it, their belief and their faith. But I bet the politics amongst all of those people is absolutely crazy. Yeah, I bet it is, as the TV kind of programme show, a hotbed of political manoeuvring and... See, I, I'm not so sure because whatever the, <coughs> that you could just get away with it and just say, "Look, you know, I'm I'm God's representative on the planet, and He's told me this is what you've got to do. So go and get on with it. There's no arguing." No, see, I comfort. think it's more democratic than that. Because every I, I don't I don't know too much about them to be fair. They all like a bit of a poll, don't they? I I really don't know. Yeah, whoever floats their boat. I know. Anyway, I didn't think they were allowed to be. Oh, okay. What? No, Did nothing down there. Oh, right, okay. So, let's go to the Ukraine. Okay, Ode- Odessa. Odessa, yeah, in yeah, the Ukraine. Yeah, there's, there's one there, apparently. There is. Um, Not just yeah, one, and but 1,500 miles. Yep, yeah, and it's all, they're, they're uncharted as well. Maze yeah. of tunnels and concerns for more than 1,500 miles. You do it's not the want to get lost trans- down there, everybody. No, no, definitely not. You'll be walking around for years. Mm, um, you might die before then. It's, it? it's, it's the <laughs> longest underground passage in the world. And it was dug out in the 17th century. And it was even expanded in the 19th century to quarry for Lord <coughs> Limestone. Sorry. Which built most of the city. Mm. So yeah, there you go. I like um, this one. I like this one because you can see um like eras of mummification. Okay. So you can go back to like when it was first sort of like the original kind of people that were put in there right through to nineteenth century remains down there. Yeah, that that would be interesting to see what what sort of um, technic- technological advances mm. in mummification. Yeah. Exactly. Um, they, they said that, uh, what was it? Yeah, the, the different eras. Um, and it's a, ma- a macabre reminder of what can happen if you get lost down there. It is one of those things, but, I mean, like in um, Paris, they have the catamites, don't they, who explore the uncharted areas of the catacombs. They have this in Odessa as well, um, and they, it, it's become quite a thing in these kind of, like, environment, you know, you know, cities that have these environments, is crypt exploration, you know, or catacomb exploration. But because of the extent of some of these... Um, Pass, you know, like these these catacombs, people get do get lost down there, totally, utterly lost. But you've got to remember how dark they are. The minute if you light source goes out, you're done. Absolutely, yeah, definitely. You fall over I mean, I, yourself, I, you're done. The, the closest to these sort of things I've been to is um, Chisler's Caves in Kent. Mm. I think it is. My yeah. Is, might not be Kent, might be further over. Um, Aren't they shut now? The sort of way. No, they still they still do um, tours and stuff down there. They used to do paranormal um, overnight challenges until someone knocked himself out. 
Um, so they stopped just doing... knock himself yep. out. He actually was really seriously injured. He broke it, like his shoulder in that. Didn't oh, he? oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the story is that, that there's a like a water source in the caves, and apparently a, a lady fell into it and she drowned. And basically, her spirit is said to haunt that area. And what they used to do is um, they'd take you down there with a candle and leave you there all night. And you, you obviously, you can bed down and stuff. But his candle blew out, and he started hearing footsteps and various, like the whispering of this woman. Um, and he decided to do a runner, and because obviously it was literally pitch black, he ran straight into the wall. Yeah. And the, ne- the next day when they came to take him out, um, they found him unconscious still on the floor, so they don't even know how long he was down there for, like unconscious for. Um, but for health and safety reasons, now they don't allow them. But that that is, yeah. The reason I said about Cheslers is because basically that's the closest I've ever been to a cave system, and it is pitch black. You cannot see anything in front of your face. Someone could be standing there, right nose to nose with you. And you wouldn't see them. That's how pitch black it is. Yeah. Well, I've been in caves where they've turned the lights out to give you an idea. Because there's because yeah. there's no natural light source, there's nothing for your eyes to pick up on so to give you night vision. Yeah. So no, that's, that's nothing. <clears throat> okay, yeah. So um you are completely blind. So your mind would play absolute tricks on you, though, wouldn't it? It really would. It would. You, you, you. I, I would have thought you'd see what appeared to be light shadows, but not, if that makes sense. Well, your eyes trying to adjust, but can't adjust because yeah. there's no light source. Yeah, probably you would get. You know, like we talk about uh, mists that you see sometimes in investigations, yeah. but it's not a mist. It's actually your retina adjusting to the different light systems. Um, light sources that are coming through um, so people say oh I see a mist I'm seeing a mist and they're not it's actually something to do with their eye I think yeah you're probably right you probably would get that sort of thing but it's like when you yeah. shut your eyes you get sort of like a staticky kind of effect anyway don't you to start with yeah you do I, I tend to do that as well and I I, I sort of when, when I do close my eyes and stuff I, I do get shapes forming and sometimes they do look for like faces. Yeah. But again, that I think that's just like pareidolia. It's, it's an eye thing, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because but anyway, if you, let, let's, let's move on to the next one. Right. Where, where are we going uh, with this one? In in Malta. Oh, we're on Malta. Oh, yes, we are on Malta. Yeah. Oh, I re- the reason you've got me to talk about this one is because the bloody name again, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> How Safliani Hypogeum. Yeah, that's the one. From now on, it'll be known as Hal. Okay. <laughs> Hal for now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Now, stonemasons unwittingly uncovered Hal in 1902. Um, and it's basically, this is an archaeological gold mine. It's a three-storey underground complex. It dates back 4,000 years BC, um, when the Bronze Age was just a twinkle in Europe's eye, to give you an idea of time concept. Um, They have no idea. They think it was made by prehistoric Maltese people. And they think the catacombs were actually first used as a sanctuary. And then thought, ah, sod that, we'll just shove the dead people in there. See, I'm I'm also wondering because obviously it, it, it's in Malta, and I've just done that blog on the Knights of St John. Mm-hmm. I'm oh, wondering if they. I, I'm wondering if they had anything to do with it. You know, that might be maybe, worth maybe further not, research. So yeah, not mainly, not particularly making it, but using it at some point. Well, you can because have a little obviously research on that one. For, Yeah, I mean. They're, um, the catacombs are also used for religious purposes as well. Um, so, yeah, that, that would probably make sense, actually. But, like, I just want to reiterate before we finish the show that these 
places like some of these places are absolute marvels in their own right with artwork and um, carvings and astonishing feats of engineering that have gone into these um, catacombs that they've survived this long i mean this is four thousand years bc i mean this is like well old you know and it's still beautiful it's still sorted and gorgeous inside if you like a catacomb think, that is <laughs> I mean, it's the, um was it the cupertin monks or the, the monastery one mm. um i think it was that one that was actually known for the the best design that the bones were put into right so they would literally make like i don't know like patterns with the bones yeah, you see a lot of churches like that, though, as well, don't you? We've talked yeah. about that before now, churches that use bones as a... Um, in fact, there was one, I can't remember where it is now, but there's a really famous church where the subsidence was was basically um, bringing up bones and they were still burying in the ground. So the caretaker or, you know, the, the well, I don't know what you'd call him, the caretaker, it wasn't the priest, it was like the person who looked after the bones started making things out of the bones like chandeliers and um, altars and stuff like that and the church is totally decorated like that it's absolutely fantastic I'd like to visit there if I could remember the name of it Church of Bones I'm sure it's called something just simple like that I'm sure Richard is filling me in in the chat room I'm not sure he is is. (laughs) yeah we've like literally come to the end of the show we've only got about a minute left so we're going to over run slightly um, what, what's coming up for next week? Okay, next week. What are we talking about next well, week, the rest, Paul? Well, the rest, of the rest of the week anyway. Let's do that first while I just quickly look. Okay. <laughs> 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 I know you so well. Well, tomorrow night on Haunted Histories, um, our lovely Penny has got Jane, Jane Harris in the studio with her talking all about old Edinburgh and I'm sure they'll talk a lot more sense than we have done tonight. <laughs> <laughs> then on Thursday evening on PSH Radio, MJ Dixon is back on. It is the official launch of PSH Radio, um, being the official radio show for Sage Paracon this year. It is the official launch on Thursday evening with MJ. Then on Friday evening, myself, Mark, and Carl, we're digging back down into the alien. Um, roots looking at alien implants this week so um, yeah they're going to educate me all about alien implants uh, good no that's going to be a good show actually that'd be quite interesting I'll be listening in on that one I think um, yeah. but next week <laughs> next week on the paranormal concept show I, do you know what I think we should have Richard in on next week why what we because got because we're going all the way to Australia Are all we? the way f- from Uluru in the outback yeah. Ah, yes, and our lovely Richard lived out there for quite a while. Yeah, so I think we should get him on the show. Awesome. Well, Mr. Richard Clements, be prepared. You are on the show next week. We are talking all about... <laughs> for, those for those that people that don't know, Uluru is basically Ayers Rock. Yeah, loads but of weird stuff Uluru happens Uluru is the official Rock. name of it. And and it'll be talking about like there's there's loads of myths and stories, legends, UFO stories, ghost stories, all of that surrounding Uluru. You know what though, the whole Aboriginal belief systems and how they translate their their environment is absolutely fascinating in its own right. Yeah. We haven't really touched on it. We touched on it a little bit with sinkholes, believe it or not. Okay. Um, when we did the show on the Dark Mirror show about sinkholes. But that sort of led down a little side rabbit hole for uh, myself and Paul, and we started to look at it, and it was fascinating, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, yeah, that's sort of, I think that's where Uluru show was born, wasn't it, I think? I think it was. So that, that's what we're doing next week. Cool. So I want to thank everyone for joining us that's been in the chat room. It's it's a pleasure reading all your comments, and I'll I'll get through them again at some point. Um, as Richard said, Hanging Rock is is another place. Apparently, we'll be talking about next week. But Richard knows all about that. As it's the same as his, thing. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's the same fair. thing. We're, we're, um, 
we'll learn or we've got all week to learn about it anyway it's made famous really by a film called Picnic at Hanging Rock okay that's uh, where and this uh, is yeah anyway we'll talk about that next week everybody huh yes absolutely so thank you Kerry for joining me oh you're very welcome and as always thanks everyone for listening and we will see you all again next week and it's a good night from me and it's good night from me thank you for listening don't forget to join us for more shows throughout the week. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web to keep up to date with all the shows right here on Parasearch Radio.